Hello everyone, I am so excited today because I am having an interview with Kezia Blaine, the girl that is not girl anymore, that brought the magic to the world, who wrote when she was 12 years old, Magical Powers, which was the trigger to inspire me to open a national competition for children and to change children's lives. So today we are going to find out how it all happened. And I hope it will inspire you like it, it inspired me. Hello, Kezia. Hi, Tali. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it's so lovely to see you. Last time you were younger at the House of Lords, just after the first competition. So let's get to the main question that I would like to know as a writer, did you write magical powers in one take? Was it special location? Can you remember anything that you can share with us about those magical moments? Well, I actually, I remember it was kind of set through school, you know, to kind of write a poem and, they kind of done this prompt of, you know, write about, you know, what you would do if you had magical powers. And I think being at that age where you're kind of growing between kind of still being a child, but then also kind of realizing the bigger picture and everything else that's going on in the world, there was obviously referencing things in the poem that happened in my own life, you know, seeing grandparents in and out of hospitals and becoming more aware of their kind of fragility and that you know these illnesses could uh, you know potentially kill them and and to, you know when you're younger you don't really think about these ideas of death so much but when it kind of comes into your own life and you see your grandparents very ill so I think a lot of the things in the poem like wanting to cure the sick and the weak came from very real experiences of you know I kind of remember being my grandpa in hospital once we used to go and stay at my grandparents sometimes during holidays and he kind of got rushed to hospital um, in the middle of the night so we went to go and visit him like the next day and I just remember just kind of sitting on his bed and kind of just wanted to just like touch his head and you know and luckily he actually came out of that and that was wow. fine there's kind of the mixture of things I'd seen in my own life and also kind of again still being a child and very excited about these kind of fantastical magical things that still very captivate you so the yeah. kind of still be able to fly and walk on water and also I've just always so loved nature it's been mm. some part of my life I've grown up somewhere that's very very surrounded by woodland and nature and like I said even with my grandparents they were so outdoorsy and they would often you know take us on adventures and I think it was really nice that they often captivated our imagination kind of they were very mm. bit of we'd go on walks opposite my house and they say look we're gonna go visit the like you know go see the fairy tree or you know the witch's house it kind of played into that kind of imaginative play so mm. I think out of yeah, that kind of middle ground of kind of still on the lower end, kind of reaching towards being a child still and having this imagination, but then also still being very aware and of these kind of like adult issues of yes, you know, the yes. world is a place and wow. kind of being stuck in the middle of it and kind of trying to want to, you know, want to want better, I suppose, for the world. Yes, yes. It, it just comes so much across and it's for the first time that I actually speak with you about it because it was your father that brought me the poem and uh, now I understand why it's affected me so much. I really understand. We'll speak about it in a minute, but how did it feel to you when you first time heard the melody and those words which I edit, um, but all the phrases were your phrases, I just put them around, which that's what I love doing. How did it feel? feel to you when you heard it as a song <laughs> it made me very emotional as you said it's it just has this power and yeah I just absolutely loved it I just couldn't believe that something I'd almost written when I was like younger could have such a profound impact and 
to kind of see that it's almost been like immortalized now is just so profound and yeah I'm so so grateful for you know how you've kind of given it these legs and now <laughs> I'm affected in the same way like that's all I want so, wow you know, amazing amazing and and how does it feel to you because obviously that particular poem suddenly trigger my creativity of understanding that each child has possible treasure inside so because of your song i opened the national poetry competition there is much bigger plans and it's all because of you yeah, how does I'm... it feels to you <laughs> myself really but I, I've always been quite a believer in kind of synchronicity in life and kind of the path you're led down and it's quite interesting kind of how my personal path has been carved out kind of since then I've actually got you know a huge connection to children still in my life because of the career paths that I've taken you know I I'm currently nannying so I'm actually looking wow. after children and I have been for you know the past few years my mum owns like a Montessori nursery school which again like I had a Montessori upbringing and I right. think like the positive effects of that kind of education and I've also worked in her you know Montessori setting and also her forest school that she has as well which is a huge connection to to nature and then also right. through photography and always having this thread of art through my career path as well whether that was very you know very early on from kind of when I was at secondary school right into kind of obviously studying at an arts university and kind of doing photography and again that's still very much part of my life and mm. um, I'm very into kind of collaboration within my own practice as well and you know I often do artist assistant work as well so there's a real thread of kind of working with others, um, collaboration, kind of using, bouncing off each other's creativity is how we are. But, you know, you kind of had the, the poem and then you've got your own creative voice as well. And then also this thread of still kind of spending time with children. And I think I've really, really valued through spending this quality time with children and looking after them. Their, their ability to kind of open our, our world view. And I'm so open to that, that even though I'm older than them, that they have something to teach me and that yeah. I can learn from them. And I've had so many times of being with children and they've kind of said you know, profound things or just asked me questions. And I thought it's just the most amazing thing ever. And mm. I think that's a perishable part of being a child is there's kind of just curiosity and just very genuine. Yeah. Yeah, just very genuine beings so yeah it's, it's interesting how kind of it's taken off since then and since that poem and how these wow. like threads have kind of actually stayed very obvious in my life yes yes everyone we will have the description and the website of kezia kezia is now a very talented artist and uh, it's so beautiful how you became and still to become, are there more poems that uh, you wrote that are hidden out there? Um, probably not so much from that age when I kind of created that poem, but again, it's very interesting that writing has always been quite like a key thread in my life as well. Like even when I was at university I'm I'm a very like tactile person I enjoy like handwriting things and I'd always have small notebooks you know alongside the kind of work that I was creating and then particularly in you know the lockdowns of Corona, yeah. it, my art took a completely different turn and well I wouldn't say completely different turn yeah, but yeah. I carried it in to probably a place I wouldn't have done if we hadn't mm. have had a my art took more of a spiritual turn and more of a kind of art for healing. And the kind of work that came out was kind of um, photographs and also kind of writing, which is kind of like alongside them. So it was kind of like words um, that I felt were important kind of came to me almost intuitively, but something like rebirth or security and then kind of creating these images that are in response to those words. And then a lot of the time I would kind of write 
short kind of poems or texts that kind of would go alongside that of kind of my interpretation of kind of maybe what rebirth was or you know the need for it and wow. yeah, Eric knowledge and intuition and gut feelings and you know the deeper meanings of life and the thing and the undercurrent of you know the deeper yes. meanings. so definitely you know again right come full circle again as particularly last year and these projects I'm definitely going to be carrying on you know mm. kind of, so again yeah it's interesting that writing I think it does have this kind of direct connection to source if that's something that yes kind of, yes yes uh, flow state I think that's what it is as well particularly with handwriting I think if you're handwriting things down and you're just kind of going with the flow it is just this flow state of some you're tapping into something and it's just coming onto the page it's almost yes. like you're conscious of it so that's definitely something that I'm kind of interested to kind of practice more mm. kind of the flow state and kind of do this writing and again I, I read a lot of books in lockdown one oh, wow yeah one of them again was the artist way by julia cameron and right. she talked about these morning notes and it's kind of part of kind of unlocking your creativity mm, and mm. is that every morning as soon as you wake up yeah you in flow state just write for you know three pages straight handwrite you don't think about what you're writing yeah Even yeah yeah write, i don't know what to write i don't know what to write and that is kind of practicing that yes yes like, seeing what comes out and connecting beautiful oh the connection are you there yes can, I am. yes you are there right before we're finishing can you share with us what is your favorite line or two lines of magical powers mine you you called it my magical powers but what what is your favorite line from all the things that you want to do good to the world what is the magic that you want to bring um i'd say probably the one where i was talking about wanting to understand minds more confusing than broken clocks because oh. <laughs> sorry that i didn't it's not in the song so i didn't edit oh, the song sorry. Oh, <laughs> no sorry. but it's a, a, i'm interesting That's... to know it just the it, it was you know when i when i edit songs to poems to become song it's need to flow with the music and yeah. i love that i love that line so share it with us share it with us the line oh, yes well i just i love that line because i think again i'm so fascinated and understand people and what makes them tick and mm. also understanding my own mind and I think at times we've all felt a bit like a broken clock and yeah 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 code what's going on inside and but interestingly I think even though that line isn't necessarily in the song I think the themes in that line yes. are in the song absolutely like with all the other words and yeah, it's just such a power, like what you've done with it is so, so powerful. And I know it's just going to reach so many people, so mm. many hearts. Yes, for me, the line that I told you that I'm not going to say why, <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to sing it because for me, it's the most powerful line. If I had magical powers, I would make people feel like the worries could just disappear. I'll do all of these and more. This is for me the ultimate. And this is what I do in my life through music and through your talent and children talent. It's just, you know, those moments that we can just escape because there, there are always problems and we just need to elevate ourselves and bring magic. And are you excited about this? Although the single was released, it's a new version, it's acoustic, it's so much more close to, to, to the words and to the music. Are you excited about the I, 30th of April? Yeah, I am, I'm so excited. I Yeah, like you say, it just feels like the time is now as well, I think people are so ready after, like I said, the year and the year oh, of yes. 
having, I think, is in a hugely introspective time and people are kind of connecting with what's really really important and everyone's had in some way or another kind of their priorities rejigged and kind of again I think it's a been a year of connecting to heart center yes <laughs> I think people after the the time that we've had over last year and and are still having now are just ready to probably appreciate it in a in a whole new way actually now mm. so I'm really excited to hear what you know the response is going to be I'm just yes yes <laughs> yes let's hope that we will really create magic and reach as many people as we can to bring them that uh, just what you brought which is magic so thank you so much Kezia I'm really looking forward to to see you soon and film something and wishing you best of luck and thank you for your poem and those words. Oh, likewise. Thank you so, so much for what you brought as well. It would have never had the reach it's had without without your magic. So it's been, yeah, we've been our alchemists. Of, of exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay.